scientists in Australia have become the first to recreate the coronavirus outside of China. Researchers at a specialist lab, Doherty Institute in Melbourne, say they've been able to grow the virus from an infected patient and it could speed up the development of a vaccine, a process that could take months. The discovery will now be shared with the World Health Organization. A professor, Stephen Hoffman, uh, professor of global health at York University, is joining us now uh, live. Uh, professor, uh, what is the significance of this uh, recent uh, report that the Australia uh, scientists have uh, actually uh, managed to reproduce the virus? Well, at this point, uh, there's still so much that we don't know about the virus. So any scientific advance like this one is extremely helpful. I have to say, in the, in the context of this outbreak, uh, the scientific response has just been totally extraordinarily uh, great in the sense that within only a couple of weeks of first identifying the cluster of cases, the virus genome was sequenced. Now we have in a laboratory the recreation of that virus. This is a really impressive scientific effort in order to get to the bottom of these important questions about this outbreak. Uh, Stephen, you know, as this outbreak progresses, the question on many people's minds is when can we anticipate seeing a peak to it? Because what we've seen now is that the number of Wuhan virus cases in China has surpassed that of, of its per perceived deadlier cousin SARS. Can we expect this cons the situation to continue to worsen in the coming weeks? In the short term, it is likely that we will see more cases, uh, partially because once we see the international spread of a virus like this, it tends to continue to spread. But the good news is that we are seeing quite the mobilization of public health um, capacity to try to address it. With, uh, with the H1N1 outbreak in 2009, so over a decade ago, that might have been the first time where there was a global outbreak where public health was able to literally change the course of of the trajectory of that outbreak, making it so that it wasn't as severe significance as otherwise. We're seeing now an even greater public health mobilization. And so in that respect, uh, there's, there's definitely no reason to panic. Of course, uh, there's reason for some concern, but public health is responding around the world in a very impressive way. Uh, now, we've also had reports uh, from Japan and Germany uh, speaking about human-to-human -human transmissions. Uh, is this a trend that uh, we can expect to see more of in the coming days? We are seeing now cases, it looks like, of human-to-human -human transmission um, outside of the uh, original context where we think this virus um, uh, first jumped from animals to humans. Uh, so that's, uh, it depends. Uh, I mean, there's lots of times in viral outbreaks where the virus is going to evolve over the course of the outbreak. Uh, and so one of the things that happens is if it does start to be human-to-human -human transmission, that can continue. But at this stage, we still don't know uh, how much uh, that will happen. Uh, until recently, we hadn't really seen third or fourth degree transmission of the virus, so there was hope that it could actually have petered out uh, rather quickly. Uh, so that hasn't, doesn't seem to have happened, but we also haven't seen so many degrees of transmission such that uh, we still don't know how bad it will get, and hopefully it will hopefully it'll go away um, quite soon. Can you give us your take on, on why we're seeing that the World Health Organization, even though it's raised its alert level for this outbreak, it hasn't declared it a global health emergency yet? So uh, well, a global health emergency is defined under the international health regulations as a risk to international public health and that that risk requires an internationally coordinated response. Last week when WHO's emergency committee met, uh, it was a divided committee, so about half of members thought that it was an emergency, half thought it was not. They were probably waiting to see whether there was going to be sustained transmission of this virus outside of China. Because in practice, whether something's a global health emergency versus a national health emergency would, in practice, uh, we'd look to that sustained transmission. We have now seen, uh, well, at least in one case, um, in Germany, we have seen transmission uh, outside of China. We know that that's now um, possible and, and, and likely to happen in other cases. Uh, and so I would expect if the emergency committee of WHO convened again, uh, they might uh, 
recommend a declaration of emergency more so than last week given the latest information. But even so, I think what we're seeing is a huge mobilization from public health. So even without the declaration of emergency, public health authorities around the world are already treating it like it is one. All right. Professor Hoffman, thank you very much for your perspective on this. We've been speaking there to Professor Stephen Hoffman at the uh, York University.